Welcome or welcome back everyone. I've made a handful of videos on this channel about candle testing. My process for testing candles, recommendations I have for testing, what I'm looking for with testing, and even some videos making test candles to test new jars and new fragrance oils and so on. However, something dawned on me today. I've been making candles for the past six or seven hours. My mind was kind of wandering on me and, and I just realized that there's something I've kind of left out of some of these videos. So today I'm gonna to tell you about my candle testing rule of twos. And the rule itself is quite simple. And I'm gonna tell you what that is right off the bat, but then I'm gonna tell you why I do this and what it affects. And the rule of twos is simply this. After I make a new candle, I like to test it after two days, two weeks, and after two months. And there's actually one more part of this rule of twos, but I'm gonna to get to that a little later in the video because it's a little bit different from these others. So the question is, why this rule of twos and why does it matter? Again, thank you all for stopping by. We're gonna get right into this content, but I just wanted to say thanks for being here and supporting this channel. If you do enjoy this channel and this content, subscribe to the channel below if you're not already. Oh, and don't forget, turn on that little bell. Click that little bell to turn on notifications. So when I post videos, you'll be notified. I'm told all the time by subscribers here on the channel that they don't always know when I post new videos. Well, you gotta turn on that little bell so that YouTube will show you my videos whenever they are released. Okay, so back to the question. Why the rule of twos, why does that matter? Well, it all boils down to really one main question. That is, what are we after? What are we trying to accomplish by testing our candles in the first place? We essentially want to check our hot throw, our wicking, and then overall safety and performance. Let's start with hot throw. The reason we want to test our hot throw after two days, two weeks, and two months is to check for consistency and any fluctuation in that hot throw. We need to evaluate it at a few different stages. Many of you are already aware of this one, especially if you're using certain types of waxes that really like a little bit longer time after you've made a candle before you really start to pick up that strong hot throw. This is most common with soy waxes, so some of you using those waxes already are accustomed to waiting a few weeks to test them. Now, it's a very debated topic, so some of you might see a major difference after two weeks or certainly two months, but some of you might not see any difference at all. It could very well come down to the type of wax you're using, the fragrance you're using, the size of your jar, and so on. But if you are in the camp that sees a notable difference after two weeks or two months versus the initial two days, then this might give you a better idea of how early you need to stock up your products. Maybe you know that you need to make your products and stock them a little bit more in advance than others. Or maybe you realize that you don't need to. Either way, the best part about testing your products at three different stages in terms of hot throw is you get to know your products a little bit better. So you have a better idea of how your products smell after a couple of days. And then again, after a couple of weeks and a couple of months. But the benefit of doing this isn't to just evaluate your hot throw at three different stages and to become more aware of your own products and how they perform, but also just to help mitigate the effect of being nose blind when you're trying to judge your own candles. Many of you are probably already shaking your head and know what I mean here. If we're making a lot of products, a lot of candles, we start to become almost, we start to become essentially nose blind and it's hard for us to pick up different scents because we're surrounded by it all the time. And if you make a candle and you test it within a certain couple days, you're already a little nose blind to that scent. So separating these testing stages out a little bit really cuts down on being nose blind to that particular scent. So you might feel like your hot throw is a little weak after a couple days because you've been around it quite a bit in a couple days. But if you wait two weeks or certainly two months, well then your nose and your sense of smell is kind of reset and you're able to more objectively evaluate your hot throw. All right, so now let's talk about the rule of twos and how it impacts wicking. Have you ever tested a candle that burned just fine and the wick seemed just right after a couple days? But then later on, you go back and test that same candle or another candle from the same batch, and it's totally different or maybe doesn't even perform well at all. I've had wicks that seemed fine at first, and then a few months later would not stay lit. They just completely drowned out all the time. Now, there are a few reasons why this can happen, and that's why I think it's very important to space out your testing when it comes to wicking. You might be wondering what could cause this to happen. It's usually the culprit of either the wax or the wick. I have personally noticed this a little bit more with either soy waxes or blended waxes that are heavier in soy or organic compounds. And the reason is that those waxes are typically a little bit more viscous and they don't burn quite as easily. And so once they've had time to kind of settle in and fully cure and really soak into the wick, certain wicks handle certain waxes better than others. They are a little bit more resilient. They can handle the corrosive nature of waxes like soy wax. But 
if you test a wick early on, well, that's not a whole lot of time for the soy wax and the fragrance oil and that wick to really interact. But if you wait several weeks or several months down the road and test that again, well, those, those materials are fully kind of combined and integrated and the way they perform and act and behave is a little bit different. Now you won't always see a difference, but there are times where I have been surprised and shocked that I thought I had a perfect recipe just to find out a few months later that it, it didn't burn at all. Sometimes you need a larger wick and there's been times where I've needed a different wick type entirely. And it's not just the wax that can do this, it can be the fragrance oil as well for the same reason that the wax does. It just takes time to soak into that wick and, and the, the properties of the wax or the fragrance oil combining with that wick can really just cause it to behave different with some time. Keep in mind that wicks are basically just cotton threads, or at least most wicks are, and they're either uh, knitted or they're weaved. Whatever the case may be, those threads, that yarn, that cotton hasn't like fully absorbed all of that liquid, all of that wax yet. But after time, that wick becomes fully saturated. Now, most wicks on the market these days are pre-waxed by the time you get them. They've already become primed, so to speak. However, certain fragrance oils and certain waxes can change that a little bit and cause that wick to behave a little bit differently over time. Now, I also talked about safety and performance. Well, really by combining the previous two things that we just talked about, the hot throw and the wicking, we really covered those bases for the most part. However, there's one important thing to be aware of when it comes to safety and performance that we haven't talked about yet. Now, I want to say disclaimer, first of all, this isn't meant to scare or worry anyone. And also I'm not an insurance agent or an attorney, so just take this as experienced information, not as legal advice. <laughs> Another huge advantage of doing this level of diligent testing is to protect yourself, your products, your business, but also to ensure confidence in your products for both yourself and your customers. You will feel more confident in your products knowing how much you've tested them. You can also share your testing process with your customers so they feel a lot more confident about your products as well. But let's say, knock on wood, that you ever find yourself dealing with an unhappy customer or fighting a claim or even worst case scenario, a lawsuit regarding one of your products. All of this testing can go a long way to protect yourself, your business, and to defend your product. Just be sure that you're documenting your testing and keeping those testing records. Typically when you're dealing with lawsuits and claims about products, the burden of proof is usually on the accuser if they are claiming that your product was faulty or dangerous or caused some kind of problem. However, if you also have this diligent record of testing in your pocket as well to help protect and defend yourself, you're gonna go a long way to set yourself up to be in good shape. You can show that you did rigorous testing after two days, two weeks, two months, and you have the results of all those tests, you're in really good shape. Not to mention you have a much better chance of getting covered by insurance and maybe even better insurance rates. But again, none of that was meant to worry you or scare you. It's not something that happens a lot, but just know that this level of testing, this rule of twos can actually help you in that regard as well. So I mentioned that there was one other aspect to this rule of twos. So we've talked about testing after two days, after two weeks and two months. However, there's one other thing that I like to do as well, and that is testing two times a year. That first set of testing is something you would do whenever you're testing a new product. However, on all my products, twice a year, I like to pull a finished product from my stock. So I like to periodically go to one of my finished products on the shelf and just pull it. And I like to do that twice a year, if possible, and perform a whole new burn test on one of those finished products. The reason for this test is different than the others. The others are to kind of check against one another to make sure that your tests were correct and that you're getting consistent results on a new product over the first couple months. The biggest reason for this test to test your candles a couple times a year is to check and monitor that none of your raw materials have significantly changed. Changed enough that it could affect the way your candle burns. For example, has the manufacturer of your wax changed something about the wax that could affect wicking or hot throw? Has the melt point changed, the consistency changed? Has your fragrance manufacturer or your fragrance supplier where you purchase your oils from changed anything about their fragrance oils? That can also affect wicking and hot throw. A good example of this would be Candle Science over the last couple years had revised a lot of their oils to meet their new clean scent standard, which was a great change, but that also meant that their oils changed. Now, Candle Science did a fantastic job of relaying that information to their customers by sending out emails and putting notes on their page about this change and whether or not there was an impact much to the fragrance, but that is something that would require new testing because it could affect wicking 
It could affect hot throw, and it probably certainly affected the scent type a little bit, like what it actually smells like. So performing these periodic tests can help kind of check and monitor against those type of raw material changes, and it will help keep your finished products consistent. If you enjoy videos like this about making candles or candle testing, then check out this next video here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.